Hello and welcome to the video shows here at the CEO magazine. I am your host, Nick Baidia. Mechanism is a highly recognized and awarded small agency at the cutting edge in the new media marketing. They specialize in viral marketing and are used as a case study at Harvard Business School on engineering virality or viral marketing. Their CEO, Jason Harris, who is also on the board of Advertising Week, was with us recently to talk about how they make videos go viral and win awards. He says, if you engage the audience, entertain them and offer value, they will forgive you for inserting your message or your brand. He also says you must tell a story because storytelling builds brands, stories engage emotions and connect at a deeper level. And he's correct in pointing out that whatever you do, if you want them to listen to you, you must connect to a need that they have. But the most important ideas that emerge from our conversation are about viral marketing in the B2B space. Now, when you watch it, we'd love to hear from you what you think about it. So here is Jason for you, ladies and gentlemen. So great to have oh. you here, uh, Jason. And uh, I wanted to pick on your brain on something very specific. Uh, let me set the stage a little bit. So we've had conversations on the strategy piece, which is integral to tactical as well. But just to get us rolling, you know, it's, it's obviously very important to have a proper strategy as to why you are going viral. There are uh, viral videos and viral content that goes viral like the crazy stuff, uh, including Charlie bit my finger and the devil child and so on and so forth. Yeah, but that's not right. purposeful. That's serendipity oftentimes. Even if you do it to make it viral, you really have no goal. And you're in a business, so you want to make videos and content go viral to make money, right? And that's a very different beast, right? So assuming that yeah. you have a strategy, and I, I, you, know, you can talk about strategy as well, but assuming you have a strategy as to why you want to make videos go viral and what kind of content you want, what are some of the tactical things that, that you would advocate? Uh, that's a good question. So tactical things that I would advocate if you're trying to, uh, and what we call it is engineer virality. So, um, you know, even the devil baby, even those guys, they, you know, it's, it's not, they're not trying to capture lighting in a bottle. They really had a methodical approach and they said, you know, there's a trend uh, and there is a trend now that's uh, called prankvertising, which is essentially um, what, uh, what that, what that example uh, was. Um, Pepsi did it with, uh, Jeff Gordon very successfully um, uh, with test drive. And so that sort of um, type of viral marketing is all about uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a target and they're an unsuspecting target and you try to, you know, scare the hell out of them or get some type of reaction. And that's a, a big trend. So it is baked into the creative idea. What will make this pop? What will make people share it? How is it entertaining? And we always call it the entertain, you know, the candy and the medicine. You're always trying to wrap the entertainment viral sharing piece. And then the medicine is you're trying to get people to go to a movie. You're trying to get people to, you're trying to sell soap. You're trying to sell soda, whatever it is. There is uh, that sort of payoff at the end, which is ultimately in viral marketing. Right. You're trying to sell something. No marketing you are. Right. And so, so um, go ahead. So, so the thing is, you said candy, uh, uh, medicine in a candy, which is basically, to some extent, I call it craziness with a message or craziness with a purpose. Uh, totally. But you know, there's, an, there's a limit to craziness. People are doing all kinds of crazy things. And there are, on the other hand, some videos that are really not crazy, but they go viral. But what, what seems to me be the case is that it has to be emotive. It is all about emotions, fear, greed, sex, whatever else you may call it but something that people have strong emotions about. So do you always have to have that uh, craziness or, or candy approach to, to creating videos that go viral? Uh, yes. I mean, now you do because you're, the, the competition is for attention is, is, is so rich. And I will give you some specific tactics of how you get things to catch on um, in, in a second. But I think you – you have to, it has to be, when you're, and when we're concepting them, you have to think about what is the, what is the PR headline? What would people write about on blogs and embed this video 
and you have to write those PR headlines to make sure the idea has merit. Not that those will be the actual headlines that people grab onto, but uh, you know, the world's first ever X, the, you know, like you said, playing on people's emotions, scaring the hell out of them, a heartwarming story, um, very, very emotional and the headline driven, simple ideas, you know, anything that's too uh, complicated won't fly and anything that feels like an ad and not entertainment won't fly. So you kind of rule a lot of those things out. Um, tactics though, that you have to, when you see stuff that pops, um, very rarely does it pop just because. There is usually a strategy behind it um, and there can be a strategy behind it and, have, and it doesn't work, but um, a couple of things that are always implemented um, and you might be familiar with some of this, but video seeding. So video seeding is using TrueView or other tactics. Other, there's third party companies out there like ShareThrough where you can buy views and you buy views in the first 24 to 48 hours of launching something so that there's enough um, uh, numbers on it. So when someone clicks on a video, there's half a million, a million and a half, there's views, there's a view count. And so when people see that view count, it's not 301, it's you know a million and a half. And they will say, oh, this thing is taking off, I'm gonna share it. Uh, this thing is popular, I'm gonna share it. So what you do is buy targeted views very early on when you launch something so that you give the impression that it's already viral, therefore it has a good opportunity right. to people, actually people, go viral. People need a sense of comfort level. They, they need to say, well, I am the one first one to tell to my audience, but you know, there is a brand name associated. It's already done half a million or a million hits. But here's the thing. Yeah. Seed, seed views, as you may call them, uh, you know, YouTube is, is a cesspool. It's an abyss. I mean, if you just create a video and let it be there, uh, you, the chances of serendipity uh, getting you up is, is really, really remote. Is that true? Yeah. So you do have to do uh, this seeding. Yeah, you have to do, yeah, you have to do seeding for sure. The other thing that, um, that we uh, engage with a lot is um, in, um, influencers. So influencers are um, people with a YouTube channel or presence or they're bloggers or somebody that has an audience that you're trying to attract and you also, you know, it all comes down to, you pay these guys to promote your video or content and post it on their channel, post it on their blog. So that's the other way. So there's, you know, the view count, then it's working with influencers who are the right audience for whatever you're promoting, a movie, a soft drink, a car, and that will help also make it look like this thing is taking off. And so, you know, the audience wants validation, they wanna see it in places, and when they see that, they're, they're gonna be more apt to share. So those are two things that in the new media age that replace you know, the old media of buying print and TV media. These are you know, two tactics that help you kickstart a viral uh, program or viral idea. So this creative stuff, um, that, the stuff that yeah. gets views initially or gets people's attention, attention grabbing stuff, this may not have anything to do with your message. Correct. Okay. So what about accountability? How do you say, uh, let me think of this. Are we having a conversation? I think it's a phenomenally powerful conversation. I've had such wonderful conversations with a lot of people whom otherwise people don't get to hear. But these videos will never go viral because a very limited number of people are interested in it. But the people who right. are interested are valuable to me. So should I as a B2B entity should think, well, viral marketing is not for me? Um, I, I mean, it, it, what's your, what are your objectives? For example, do you want your name? You have a very target audience. Do you feel like it would help you to have more of a, a household name, uh, to attract your audience or do you like it sort of insidery and small? Well, um, let's, let's take an example of something that, uh, is not very commonly known, such as, uh, uh, there's a video of OCD, uh, um, Obsessive compulsive disorder that went 10 seconds or one second. I don't know how much it was. 
and it went viral as well. Now, OCD is, is fairly widely spread, but if I think of myself, my stuff is geared towards uh, pretty much successful wa and wanting to be successful, truly successful people, very limited number of people. And uh, they are very, very busy. They don't have time. So how do I target them? They're not on Facebook typically. They are not scouring YouTube needlessly. So what happens to those kind of clients if you have any? Um, yeah, the, they, this is probably not the right um, marketing you know, arrow in the quiver to use because this is, you know, the objective of this is to get buzz and press uh, to the masses. And so that's not gonna, you're, you know, you're not gonna be targeted. If you did a very humorous take on what it's like to be a CEO and a day in the life and it was hilarious and funny and all these things or cliches or whatever it might be, that could go viral, that could help you build your name up and then people would be attracted uh, to you. But we, you know, viral marketing is focused on uh, getting as many views to as many people right. as, you know, throwing in that wide. For sure. so, so from your perspective right now, what you're saying is that viral marketing is non, uh, what's the right word? Uh, it's non-discriminating. It's for it's the masses. That's right. It's for the masses. And uh, the ROI for you or a company that's very specific, it's not, you know, it's not going to be there. Um, there's also a big misconception in viral marketing that, you know, we're always fighting against, which is that it's cheap, you know, that um, it's inexpensive to make a viral ad. You shoot something for a little bit of money. Uh, you post and pray and the thing takes off. And you know, that is a, a huge misconception just because something's airing on TV and something's airing on your computer. There's still the same uh, creative and costs to make that piece. Um, that's a hurdle that we, we, we face a lot. And um, the uh, what's behind making a hit is that there's a lot of strategy and a lot of um, work to, to get something uh, to be a hit. Sure, there's a lot of random things that people post, like the, some of the examples, the famous examples at the beginning of the conversation, um, and th those were just lucky strikes, but they're not going to, there's not going to be a follow up. Uh, and lucky strike is not a strategy. Lucky strike is a lucky strike because it happens to be. That's not your strategy yeah. to make a video go viral. You know. That's right. Hope is hope is not a strategy. Hope is, right. is not a strategy. You know, but this not, is a very very important uh, statement that you made, and I'm not so certain if this is entirely true or not. Personally, that B2B and you know highly segmented, highly uh, niche audience. Uh, will will not engage uh, will not be amenable to viral marketing uh, compared to the others. I think in general, yes, it's so much easier to do viral marketing for B two C. B two B will be harder. Uh, we don't see too yeah. many viral marketing videos uh, that are available or known in in the business segment. So you're right to that extent. But but do you think that um, there are strategies that we could possibly look at for uh, niche audiences, maybe perhaps engaging with with uh, the associations that might be uh, out there, such as, for example, National Self-Employed uh, People's Association. I think it's called NASE, N-A-S-E. Uh, you know, they have a large audience or AARP, they have a large audience. If you have a product or a video, you might share with them, but there is no channel out there that is specifically geared towards them. It's all in one big pot called YouTube. Yeah, that's right. So, so you mentioned so are you something saying about Go ahead. Are you saying that, uh, in your opinion, there's a um, a market opportunity to create sort of a business to business channel, viral channel? I see that there is an op there is a problem. I mean, you know, B two B would like to utilize the medium as well, uh, the viral marketing channel as well. It's a it's a part of the mix marketing mix for uh, for the you know to consumer businesses. Uh, you know, if I am a surgeon, as I was telling the another person earlier, you know, I'd like to know more about it and I'd like to be informed of what's going on. So there is a need. Now, YouTube doesn't allow me these and maybe the channels will emerge where I will subscribe to 
uh, to the surgery channel, so to speak. You know, maybe that hasn't happened. Yeah. Maybe this is the heydays, and so segmentation hasn't happened. But eventually, segmentation will happen. Has to happen. That's been historically the case uh, for all products, all services. That eventually segmentation takes place, and there is an opportunity where you know somebody will come up and say, "This is the channel for surgeons." Do you think that? Yeah, I mean, I, I to to be totally candid, um, because of our business, we are because we're an advertising agency. We really focus on Fortune 500, Fortune 100 B two C businesses. Now that you say that, though, it is it is going to be because content is. Um, Everyone's moving towards content, right? Um, you know, you're you're moving. You, I don't know where your business started, but if it if it's print, I'm sure your video you're doing a lot more video content. Yes. Right? Uh, and so I think it's very insightful, and I think it's it's true. Just like there's, you know, there was a few magazines. Then those magazines got vertically targeted, and they were specialized. Same with broadcast that that would beg to reason that there will be uh, video content sites like YouTube and Vimeo and Vivo and these other ones that out of those will be verticals that will fall out in the next, you know, five to 10 years. That makes a, a ton of sense. It's very smart. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, because when I think of Facebook uh, and this is from my own experience, um, you know, face, I go to Facebook and I will post my daughter's singing uh, programs. I'll post all kinds of things that I know everybody's interested in and they get hits. But if I post one of our video, I get no hits because the people <laughs> whom I'm engaging with, they are regular yeah. people. They're not interested in, in this uh, content, but I know this content is valuable and to some people, but unfortunately they're all mixed up. So LinkedIn, unfortunately is not designed Correctly, from my point of view, I'm not, you know, I wish it had a Facebook component. To now, me. now, do you have a YouTube channel, on, or do you have a channel on YouTube? Yes, we have started posting more on the YouTube channel. Previously, we weren't, but yes, now we have a YouTube channel, and we are getting subscribers. But uh, it's a slow growth because, you know, like you said, it's a snowball effect, and and also, um, it's like su nothing big. Uh, success begets success. If you're not visible, nobody's seeing you. And the bigger, bigger channels, bigger, um, you know, the million hit videos are way up there. And I, I, I noticed what you said earlier, that there are these groups within uh, YouTube that are perhaps that, that where the, the threshold is less. Let's say maybe some business channel or something, because YouTube is not categorized as far as I can tell right easily. You have to look for it. <coughs> so if I go looking for pet owners or something like that, maybe I'll find a video with 5,000 hits as the most popular video of the day. Yeah, YouTube's a mess. You're, you're, you're no, no doubt about it. So, it's very hard and they keep changing it. It's very hard to, to find the relevant content that, that you might be looking for, absolutely. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting though, YouTube is, is more and more becoming, um, it is becoming, becoming the home for content and even even around a b2c perspective brands are doing um, a lot less you know campaign microsites or posting the videos uh, to their dot com you know more and more it is that they're focusing their channel on YouTube is becoming the their website their platform for content and that is where uh, their efforts are uh, driving people trying to get the audience because you know the the theory is so many people are on there already that if you're either doing you know pre-roll or doing annotations where you can click on it and it takes you there um, that's where you want to be versus having people type in you know Starbucks backslash Frappuccino right. or you know whatever uh, the particular address might be Absolutely. And I think, you know, eventually YouTube would get into and it, they already are, but perhaps more sophisticated, uh, sophisticatedly where, you know, they will know your habits, viewing habits and, and send you videos accordingly, even though they may not be at the top of the game. Uh, and, and that I think yeah. will change uh, what's, uh, what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's, that's right. It's going to be um, a personal recommendation engine, like, you know, like Netflix is, you know, learns your viewing right. habits or Pandora. And, and I do think that it, it has to 
there's so much content that it has to start doing a job of sorting for you and finding, you know, serving up content for you, definitely. Well, we are living in some wonderful times, Jason, you know, where there's so much happening. These, these are exciting times. And, uh, you know, you've done a great job with your work. You've been doing it for the last seven years. So you're on the top of the game. And I'm really glad I got to talk with you. So thank Absolutely, you so much, Jason. Yeah.